Hello, this is Joe which is astrophoto.com. Today we're going to be covering steps on how to get started in guiding and some tips to help you along the way. Since it's been unreasonably cloudy and rainy the last few weeks, of course right now the sun is shining, but not for long. And actually I'm gonna have to get indoors here in a minute because the rain's due to come in, in just a few. But uh, I wanted to switch gears a little bit since I can't really image and talk about some other aspects of the hobby. And a lot of people have asked me about guiding since um, my video on five tips to advance your astrophotography. And I've also helped a few people out and, and it's been fun to do. I enjoy helping. So what I wanted to do is make a video on steps to get started in guiding. And I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down at the computer here in a bit and go over the, the steps. And then I'm gonna give you some tips on uh, better ways to help um, get your guiding, your RMS error just a little bit lower. So before we get started, I just wanted to mention what guiding can help with and what it can't help with. Guiding, what guiding does is that it locks onto a star in your image and it sends pulses back to the mount to keep you on target. Um, it's just that simple, really. And the atmospheric refractions um, get averaged out in multi-star guiding so that it helps to realize you know, where, where those stars are because the atmosphere um, causes them to look like there's waves going through them. That's why you get the twinkling stars. Another aspect that it can help with is the residual periodic error within your mount. Um, due to the backlash in, in a, a, any mount really, um, the lower end mounts are gonna have more of this and it helps pick up the residual periodic error correcting. Uh, it's also still important to be using your periodic error correction if you have that capability in your mount. Uh, I made a video on it and I'll post that up here. Uh, after you're done with this video, if you wanna learn more how to get PEC on your mount, um, check that out. So what can't guiding help with? Well, guiding can't really help with bad backlash uh, in your declination. Um, and on lower end equipment, um, it's, it's going to be worse than on higher end equipment. Um, there are some features in PHD2 to try and help with the deck backlash and that's where I would try and focus. Um, I would probably try and stay away from um, troubleshooting your deck backlash in EQ mod, if at all. Uh, the other reason is, is that when you're guiding, you really want to try and get your guiding ratio under around one to four. I, I've seen it work on one, one to five and even one to six, but, but not that well. Um, so the shorter that you can get that ratio or the smaller you can get that ratio, the better off you are. Um, so with the reducer on this one, or say without the reducer, I've got about 2000 millimeters. I would need to be guiding, if I wasn't using the OAG, I'd need to be guiding with a minimum of a 500 millimeter focal length telescope. And that's going to be heavy. It's going to add a lot of weight, um, which is why I went with OAG. I'm not saying you can't do it. Lots of people do. Um, but I think that for the, the most optimal setup, you're going to want to use um, an OAG for anything probably at 2,000 millimeters or above. And you definitely want to make sure that you stay within that one to four guiding ratio. And this also has to do with your guiding camera as well. Um, it can get a little in depth, and I'm not gonna really cover that today, but I just wanted to mention it. And the last thing that guiding cannot help with um, is your scene. And I can tell you right now with the way it's been here lately, um, my guiding could be really poor. Even when the clouds uh, are gone, the humidity here because of all the rain is, is extremely high and it makes the scene really bad. Um, jet stream can make the scene bad, high thin clouds. Um, there's a lot of just variations into what, what goes into it, which is why I think it's important to learn how PHD2 works, 
what it's doing and the adjustments that you could make to help it out just a little bit more in bad scene conditions. When the scene conditions are fantastic, you, you don't have to do much at all. Uh, it pretty much works just straight out of the box. Unfortunately, um, not everyone has perfect scene conditions all the time. The first step is to download and install PHD2. You want to get the version with multi-star guiding and you can get it here. I'll leave a link in the description below, but you want to go to openphdguiding.org and downloads. And you, if you, depending on when you're watching this video, you may want to um, just download it straight from here or go to the development snapshot build. Currently, you need to get the development snapshot build in order to have the multi-star guiding. So you would come in here and you would download this Windows or Mac, depending on your operating system. Step number two is to use the wizard in PHD2. When you first load PHD2, uh, a screen like this is going to pop up called the new profile wizard. And you'll want to put in your guide camera. And I use the ASCOM drivers instead of the native drivers. You'll see those here. and or based on your camera, I have the ZWO uh, 174 I'm guiding with. But I use the ASI cameras. And what you do is you populate this, and if you're using an OAG, or if you're having issues finding guide stars, you probably want to set this to bin 2. And it's best to do it now when you're first starting up, because the wizard's going to put every all your values in, and it's going to calculate... Um, your step size for calibration and then it's going to give you an option to run a dark library right away and you're going to want to do that. After running the wizard you want to confirm that all of your settings are correct and that it didn't, you didn't accidentally put in your imaging camera. This has happened to me before. It happens to a lot of people. I, I've seen it. So make sure and confirm that your pixel size is correct and that your focal length is correct. Um, you could do that in the brain tab or the clicking the brain icon will bring you to advanced settings. You can also get there by clicking guide and advanced settings. And you want to go to the camera tab and make sure that your pixel size and um, your binning are set to two if you're going to set it to two, um, that your pixel size is correct and that your focal length is correct as well. Step number three, you want to run a dark library. It's extremely important to run a dark library, especially when using the multi-star guiding so that you don't end up guiding on a star that's not really a star and just a hot pixel. You come over and click on darks in the menu above and then click on dark library and you pretty much just let it do its thing. It's going to take five exposures for each exposure time. And it's just gonna set up a dark library for you. You just need to make sure that your scope cover is covered or your um, guide scope or OAG um, is dark and, and click start and let it run. After your dark library is set up, you want to make sure that your minimum star HFD is set to two pixels as well. So you click on the brain icon again and on the guiding tab under advanced settings, you'll see minimum star HFD pixels and you want to set that to two. You also want to make sure that the use multi stars checkbox is checked. Step number four is to get a good polar alignment and then move to the equator, which for us Northern Hemisphere people, we would point south between zero and 30 degrees. And I guess in the Southern Hemisphere, you would point north um, between zero and 30 degrees. Uh, in my case, I can't go below 20 degrees because of the walls of my observatory. So I go just above 20 degrees, but I think anywhere below 30, you should get a pretty decent calibration. I've read in many places, and so I've done it, is that right before you take your calibration, that your last scope movement is north. I don't know if this is to get rid of the backlash in the deck, 
um, but I'm just assuming that that's the case. To run a calibration, you want to go to Tools and Modify Calibration and then just uh, clear the calibration data. And then when you go to Start Guiding, it'll start the calibration. Your calibration should take between 8 and 14 steps. Uh, ideally, I try and shoot for a 12-step calibration to each side. If your calibration is taking longer than 20 steps, you're probably going to have some issues in guiding. And what you can do to make sure that you're over 8 and under 20, and again, 8 to 14 is the sweet spot, I think, um, you could change your calibration step size. In order to change your calibration step size, you can go to advanced settings and guiding and under calibration across from the focal length you'll see calibration step. Now mine set to 400 because the wizard put it there. I did not set this. What you can do if the wizard, say the wizard put 400 there and it's taking you too long, you could manually increase this or you can go to advanced and you can actually calculate your optimal step size. And again, this is just for the calibration. It has nothing to do with the actual guiding. Now, before you start your calibration, you'll notice that I have my exposure time set for 3.5 seconds. That's fine. I just leave mine alone while I do the calibration. But if you want the calibration to go faster, you can definitely change this to one second. Um, and then the steps will go a lot quicker. So step number five is to run your guide assist. At, right after your calibration, you can leave the scope pointing uh, exactly what it was guiding on before you started the calibration, that's fine. But you wanna run a guide assist and preferably, I like to run at least five minutes, optimally 10 minutes. But what you're really looking at is, you'll notice that your polar alignment Error is constantly changing. Once that pretty much settles in, then you've gotten enough data that you don't need any more than that. In order to run the guide assist, you go to the tools menu and the guiding assistant. And before you come in here and actually click on the guiding assistant, you need to be guiding. And then once you start, it will stop your guiding while it does this. You don't want to be imaging while you're doing these tests um, and setups, but you do want to be guiding. Here you'll see your exposure time and your start time, but what you're looking for is elapsed time. And I go between 300 seconds and 600 seconds or until my polar alignment error stops um, fluctuating. I also measure my declination backlash and I go ahead and apply the declination uh, correction after I'm finished with my guiding assistant. This isn't something that you absolutely have to do but I feel like it does help keep my declination RMS and my right ascension RMS closer together. I always apply the minimum movement to the RA and DEC as well as the backlash that it gives you. If you're new and you're just starting out, I would definitely apply these. Um, you could always change them later. Once you're done running the guiding assistant, I would, I normally do one more calibration. Um, again, this shouldn't take long. If you've got your calibration step size correct the, and you lower your um, exposure time to one second, it really doesn't take long to do one more calibration. And I feel like it does improve um, after you've done the guiding assistant. That's really it for the steps that you need to start guiding. I mean, there's five steps really um, to get you on your way. Now I do have a few tips to help out um, that I've noticed and that I've learned over the years uh, here and there and through trial and error and experimentation that I'd like to share with you. And unfortunately, since I'm not really guiding on anything at the moment, um, I'm just gonna show you on the on a blank screen, but I'm also gonna try and find some footage and put that up on the other side as we go so that you could see some numbers and, and the way it looks when I'm talking about it. You're shooting at the beginning when you first start for a total RMS error of one. Um, currently I'm 
trying to get to uh, 0.5 or better. And that's not always possible depending on the scene. But I do believe that even with really bad scene conditions, you should be able to get to one. And it's a good place uh, for beginners to start shooting for. The other thing that you'll notice is that your RA and your deck um, should be very similar in error. If your RA and your deck are um, far out of alignment from each other, then you're probably going to want to do another calibration. Another thing you want to do is have your star profile displayed. This will give you um, your mid FWHM, also your HDR, and you can watch the values of the star that you're guiding on. And as you make changes, you should see this improve or as the scene improves. Another telltale sign that the scene's getting worse or that clouds are overhead is that this number will start to rise. As this number starts to rise, that means that the stars in your image are, get, are becoming more bloated um, as you're imaging. So that's why you want to keep this down and that's why we want to work on our guiding. I always hear that guiding is something that you don't want to obsess over and I agree you don't want to obsess over it but I also don't think that you want to ignore it just because you have it running and you're guiding. You don't want to just accept the values that are there because you can get better values and if you get better values in PHD2 that means that your mount is guiding that much better and your images are going to be that much better. Another tip I have for beginners is to not change the minimum movement for your RA or your deck. Leave these at what the guiding assistant set them at. When you applied them after you ran your guide assist, I would just leave these alone for now. So another tip I have is to change your, your scale size to two while you're trying to troubleshoot and work with and figure out your graph. Um, yeah, your graph's not going to look pretty at a scale of 2, but I, what I see a lot of people on is a scale of 8 or, or 4, and they get to show that they've got this um, basically flat line graph. Well, that's great, um, but that tells me nothing because it, I can't see what's going on on a flat line graph. So by coming over and setting this to 2, if our total RMS error never goes above one, we've got from here to here to see what's going on on our graph. Based on what our RA and our deck are doing, we'll be able to know if we need to change the RA aggressiveness or the deck aggressiveness as to how often it's going across the line or how, how aggressive the changes are when you see the movement change. The other thing that you want to do is, or another tip anyway, is to keep your exposures between 2 seconds and 4 seconds. I keep mine at 3.5 for the majority of my scene conditions. If the scene gets really bad, sometimes I will um, raise this up to 4 or 4.5, four but usually I keep it at 3.5. So I hope these steps and tips help you to start guiding or to improve your guiding if you've already started. If you've got any other tips, um, please drop them in the comments below. If anyone sees anything that I did or said wrong, please also drop them in the comments below. I don't wanna steer anyone in the wrong direction, especially people that are just starting out. Um, I know there's a lot of different methods for guiding. There's a lot of different ways to guide. Um, and PhD2 has a lot of documentation on their website. I'm going to leave a link in the description below as well. And some of the stuff that they tell you to do in there isn't exactly the way I do it either. So really this video is the way that I guide. And I'm hoping that um, it works for you. If you have any questions and you're just starting out and um, you're running into a, a spot that you can't figure out, um, drop that in the comments below as well. And... Uh, We'll see what I could do to help out. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't, because it really does help. And we'll see you in the next video.